Maxwell and Melbourne Football Club, you're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cochin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell from the Hawthorne Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hey friends, it's MJ. Welcome back to another episode of the Coaches Panel. You've got MJ with you and another bumper episode to chat through everything that's been happening in the preseason over the past couple of days, around about two weeks to go now from your first part of your rolling lockout. The Maynard Community Series, yep, I'm all in on that name, uh, gets underway on Thursday, rolls through right through to Monday night. So before the Community Series gets underway, I thought I'd bring a couple of the lads of the panel together to help you refocus, recenter, restump, rebuild, and every reword you want to use to talk about everything we need to know before this weekend's games. I've got Louis back on this episode. Hello, buddy. How are you, man? Good, mate. It's all starting to feel real now. Really excited to uh, talk a bit of fantasy as we just get a little bit closer to that season starting. Yeah, no, exactly right. And then 2020 DT champion, co-founder, and uh, hopefully he'll make a comment about someone's hair on this episode if we're lucky. I've got Rids. Hello, mate. How are you? Hey, there you go, mate. I'm good. I'm good. All right, lads. Hey, listen, is... no, the oh, Maynard yeah. Cup, that's still a thing, is it? I'm holding on to it for you. I, I'll I tell you no... what, why don't we just call it the Proust Cup? No, Let's because... just get it out of the way. Don't Let's just do say the that. Cup. There, there are some Proust questions, and we'll get to them from our Patreons. If you want to become a patron, you can find all the details at coachespanel.tv. But if, if the Maynard jinx happened because of us calling it that, I don't want to call it the There's Bruce no Cup. Maynard Jinx. What are you talking about? Mm. He's still got a midfield role. <laughs> there, he's still talking it up. He's talking <laughs> it up in the media. No one yeah. else. Him. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we'll start there. Maybe not so much Maynard and Bruce, but we got a bunch of practice games last weekend. Um, practice games is a glorified term. They were scratch matches is probably a bit hard, even a bit too gentle. They were training drills against other teams. I think that's the adequate term for how we should look at the games. And it was lovely to have football, but gosh, we got some weird stuff. We got six terms of football in a couple of these games. We got some teams where half of them were coming back off COVID. We got other games where teams were managing three quarters of their team off injury layoffs. So there was definitely things we could learn from last week, but let's be honest, it was a scratch match at best. Nothing more, nothing less. This week, with the Maynard Community Series, it might marginally dial up a little bit. But maybe let's start here, Rids and Louis. I'm keen on, on your lads' thoughts here. Of With these nine games that we've got, what are some things that we should be looking for over these games to both rule players in or lock them further into our sides, but also then to discount and move players out of our sides? Rids, what are the things we should be looking for? Okay, so the first thing is the role change. You need to have a little bit of a look this week because this is going to be a dress rehearsal for the first round. Yes. So there's no chance that players who are going to play in a different role will not be in that role this week. So we might have seen some of that last week with clubs continuing uh, experimentation. No, I know, no, but we're talking about this week. KO. Let's yes. be honest. Those games last week, I have no idea how people determined who was who like Rory removing Rob people like Heath Chapman looked like I mean it was ridiculous yeah like that was so hard to even look at last week those scratch matches and I mean <laughs> I love the fact that footy's back and everything back, and that was the win we've gone a bit crazy haven't we as a society like we're looking at glorified scratch matches like where anything goes people that can have a run we're like people who are on managed minutes, loads, like to get them right for round one, we don't yeah. have any idea or background, but we're, we're quite easily jumping on board and going, oh, wow, so-and-so scored so many points. The only thing that we should care about last week is players got a game. Yeah, That's got all it is. It's true. And that there was no injuries. That's about it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So if, if that's what it was, what you say this week, Follow the role trend. Is that talking about the narrative we've heard through the preseason, the moments we've seen in parts of intra club and scratch matches? Now, is this just the final litmus test before you pull the trigger? Is that what you're talking about? 100%. So, if you think about Maynard, okay, let's just use him because it is his cup. Yes. Um, that we're talking about. So, 
he's not going to play midfield in the season or round one if he's not going to be tested out this week, at least on a wing or some sort of midfield role. Hmm. So, I mean, I would make a safe assumption, unless injury played a part later on to others where he had to go into that position, that what he plays this week is what you're going to get pretty much in round one. So... And I mean, I think the same can be said with guys like Gorn and Jackson and so on and the splits. And we saw similar trends like, but let's face it, Gorn's probably playing forward a little bit more doing this. Like we're going to see a little bit more heavier loads, more game-like loads, more game-like splits as we move into this one. Because really, this is the dress rehearsal now. There's only one game before we go into round one. That's true. We're two weeks away, um, depending on the time you're listening to it, or very, very close to that, um, before these games do. What about for you, Louis? Is there some other advice? Because I think that's some cracker stuff from Riz. Is, is there something else to either lock a player in or go, oh, no, I, I, I'm making a mistake if I go there. Is there anything else coaches need to be careful of with watching these games? Yeah, well, firstly, Riz nailed it with the role. I mean, if you've yeah. been keen on a bloke for weeks or months based on rumours, theories, a hunch that they're going to be spending more time in a different position and you see that, well, that's yeah. the best evidence you're actually going to get. You know, this time in the preseason is when you want to be seeing that. It's all guesswork pre-round one and noticing mm. where and how a player is actually finding the footy and building a fantasy score is important. What I will say is with the with the whole dress rehearsal thing, nine times out of 10, that is going to be the case, but you don't want to get tricked the other way too. So For example, let's say a team like Melbourne, very Mm. structured, coming off the premiership. Um, Look, they might come in and play Luke Jackson in the ruck all day and have Gorn sit full forward. You could easily read into that. But in reality, the Ds don't need to see Gorn in the ruck. They want to further Jackson's development. And a preseason hit out is the perfect time for that. And I'm sure there's going to be a few examples of that in the coming weeks. So you just need to have a little bit of common sense and realize when a bona fide gun in that position yeah. is just having a rest up forward or just sitting there to get through unscathed, ready to hit the ground running round one. So that'd be my first advice. The second one would be just to keep an eye on the points per minute. So there's some okay. good stats that'll be posted for that by various different people, I'm sure, because we've actually got champion data um, recording Tracking these the games. games. So we're yep. actually going to have some legitimate data this time around as opposed to last week. Not all players are going to play their regular minutes, especially no, the superstars. Well, so we've got the get... extended benches. We've got all those variances, absolutely. So don't get tricked into or out of a player because they scored poorly or really highly. One player may have played the first half while another may have gotten a full run because the coaches just need to see it. So um, ultimately, I'm just going to say I test, I test, I test for the preseason games. If you're thinking this player is going to break out, back your gut because more often than not you're actually right as long as you've got a bit of data to back that up yeah you've got to have the narrative in the story you're picking this player because of a b and c reasons and if it's wrong cool at least it makes sense not a i'm copying this fantasy expert or i'm doing this because none of those things hold much water um Ritz, for you is there anything else before we we move further on away from kind of the community series and we will talk about some guys that we might need to keep an eye on shortly. Is there any other more broad advice you want to make sure we get before we keep moving through? Yeah, I'm going to say something here that I might get shot down for, yelled at, carried on. This is good. I love this already. Watch the game. Do not watch the points. Please. Yeah. Pay attention to the players. It's not going to be an eye test if you're sitting there watching the scores. Like. This is the most important game of the season to be watching the game. Please do so. And and so when you mean watch the game, because look, I understand what you mean, but for some they go, yeah, I've got the footy on in the background. I'm watching it. I'm just looking down at whatever it is you your preferred. Twitter, other people's opinions on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's going, what do you see? What do you know? What do you observe? What is the game dictating? to be able to inform that decision. That's really what you were alluding to. Yeah, but also you can watch the intensity that some premiums have when they're playing. Yeah, and they're in um, first gear. A lot yeah. of these guys are really, they don't get out of first gear, mate. Like, they're <laughs> just cruising around. Like, I mean, I would not be paying any attention to anything other than premium. I like this premium. 
they played, they moved pretty well. Yeah. Their role was pretty close to what I thought it would be. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to start line putting lines through guys just yeah. on what so and so says because you're not watching the game. I mean, you got you've always got examples, yeah. So let's hmm. look at Lipinski last week, then Jay. Yeah, let's talk about new him. club. First yep. game for a new club, first Six time quarters. against other. He's try, he's like he's trying to win a spot in a midfield. Of course, mm-hmm. he's going to go at high intensity and really crack in. You know, yeah. he's got everything to say that he's going to go crack in. But if you don't watch the game, then how do you know that eighty percent of the others were just trying to get a run, getting loads under their Pays belts, the legs, doing yeah. whatever? Because it is really a practice game. So uh, they're just so. getting primed for round one. That's the whole intention of these games. But there is key, key critical bits and pieces along the way. If you look at a Coleman for Brisbane, for instance. Yeah, Kitty Coleman, yeah. Okay. So we, we've been hearing this halfback role. We've been hearing this. We've been hearing that. We saw a little bit of it late last year. We did. So, I mean, I wouldn't be going and watching this game with any other, in, like, focus when it comes to Coleman, then I want to see him line up across half back. Yeah, I want to see him take all. a few kick-ins. I want to do a bit here and there in the defensive. I want to see them looking for him when they're moving that ball. They're like, you know, that's the sort of stuff I would be wanting to look at, not what did he score in a practice game, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, so that's that's just what I would say anyway. No, it's good. Louis, I'm, I'm keen... If you've got a player that's not currently in your team's squad of 30 or on the fringes of it for whatever variance, and it could be you're a little bit shallow on cash, you're not confident on the on the role or, or, or whatever it might be, what does a player have to do in your eyes to move from not currently in your team to force their way in at some point based on the game of what happens? What What's a variance that you would need to see for you to make that move? Look, um, for my team structure, certainly, I- I'm not touching primos in, in the preseason. Right. Unless an injury part. hits, yeah. suspension. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm looking for a guy who provides value, who's got a high points per minute, who has a solid role. Mm-hmm. So not somebody who's in there because somebody else has gotten injured and they need to plug a gap. Um, I need somebody who's had poten- who has had a history of scoring um, a bit of a fantasy pedigree, all these things come into one. And if I can, if that then passes the eye test as well in the preseason, well, then mm. I start to go, okay, well, let's take somebody else in my team. Let's start comparing that player to that player, or I might yep. have a combination of two players. How can I get these into my team? Is it better with these two than these two? Process of elimination. Then that's how I'm generally going to bring somebody into my side. Yeah, I like that. What about for you, Rids? Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, so there was um, a few years ago, MJ, and I know you're 100% aware of this as well. There's also the flip side to this as well. Remember Chris Yaron when he went to half back and he oh. absolutely dominated that preseason? Beretti and Lamonda did this for us as well. Every yeah. man and his dog jumped on. You, yippee, we've got the greatest fight. And then suddenly he got tagged the next two Bad weeks line. and was out of the team. Yeah. Like, be cautious because sometimes if someone goes, really 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 good then often that highlights the opposition to um actually make them accountable okay? and we, yeah. we so, saw that last year too red so you didn't get tagged but Jaden short came out yeah. in the preseason popped a 170 and before that i doubt he was in many teams yeah, after that that's the reaction oh, that grew score. exponentially and while he didn't actually burn you during the season he didn't exactly become that 100 plus averaging player that a lot of coaches thought he was yeah good shout yeah, hundred percent. So, I mean, let's let's be absolutely honest. Yeah. Yep. You've done ninety nine percent of the heavy lifting right now. You should have. Yes. You, you shouldn't. Like, if you haven't thought about so and so, that's either because you have been naive and haven't paid attention, sure, or someone just slipped through the net that you just didn't weren't aware of. Yeah. So there is only going to be one or two of these types, okay, that actually gains your attention over the next few weeks, like yeah. before round one. Yeah, they're it, the it's ones, the tiny tweaks. You know? Yeah, but, I mean, they should never be premiums. You shouldn't be going, well, I've um, t- 
Took came out and scored 200 points this week, so suddenly I want him in my team. Like, that just doesn't make sense. You you weren't picking him for a reason. You actually have had many chances to put him into your team, and you've actually yeah. said no. Like, I mean, just because he comes out in a preseason game now, that actually doesn't count for the season proper. Yeah, Why correct. start flipping? So Yeah, or the reverse to- of that is Jack Steele goes 90, and you're like, oh, no, no, I don't want anything of Jack, even though he's midfield and tackling and doing everything. I'm going to so, go and get Rory Led because he was amazing. That kind of thing, yeah. So this is the interesting one for me. So say like tomorrow, okay, we've got Melbourne versus Carlton. Sure. Now, last week, um, Adam Chera was very, very good, I thought, in the midfield yep. Yep, while he was playing. Um, now, there's no Sam Walsh there anymore. No. I would be a little bit interested what happens if Chera does get out a bit of out of control tomorrow mm. and whether someone like a Harms or a Viney um, plays a bit accountable on Chera. Yeah, and if they do impact him, then Chera may very well end up having a little bit of accountability around him going into re- the proper season proper. Yeah, against the Tigers. I, I, I yeah, think they're brilliant. I'm just using that as an example, yeah? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the sort yeah, of exactly. stuff I'm really keeping an eye on at this yeah. point. but. It- I've done my heavy lifting. I know what I'm going to do. I know how I'm going to set up. I know my structure. And I pretty much know the combinations that fit in my structure. So, I mean... That's right. Yeah, this is just noise now, yeah? Yeah, now's the time where you're going to do the most damage to your team because you see a score, you see a role, you see someone with a team reveal, you see a tweet, you see something and you don't back yourself in and, and you pivot. And all of a sudden you make one or two little adjustments and your team can very very easily all of a sudden you've got five or six different premiums one or two different mid prices and now your team doesn't look anything like it just because just a little tweak here and there and all of a sudden it just gets out of control you're but right. the best thing about this mj is you usually come out with an article in the next couple of weeks i mean in the next seven days Hi, mate. well you say blow away your team and yep remake it and that's the perfect. Now, if you're going to have that approach, which is 100% accurate, because like I think it's an awesome way to actually reset your brain a little bit yeah. and start thinking through why you're selecting people and why you were going then, you can tweak as much as you want this week. If that's yeah. the case, just blow yeah. away your team next week and have a play. But the thing is, though, just take a screenshot of where you were before the game start. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what I do before every pre-season series take a screenshot of what my team looks like now then through the community series i actually i physically delete everyone off every team and then the four to five days post the community series i rebuild my team i don't go back and look of going oh can i rebuild what i did it's going with the information i know all pre-season with the narrative i've seen as trend not just an a not narrative once off but an narrative trend over the preseason i rebuild my team what have i seen what have i heard what have i done and i'm not trying to make these little chunks of making squares fit into round holes uh, metaphorically speaking so it's how i do it again not it's not for everyone that's totally fine but it's definitely one of the things i'd go further than that mj i'd say get the notepad out write a couple of little things why you like this player yeah no if there's someone that keeps coming into your team that you're you're a little bit iffy on, well, write your pros and cons and just set yourself a reminder of yeah, it's good. where you, you were at least thinking with this player. Because it's easy for your thoughts to change, but quite often it's our first thought, our instinctual thought that's actually correct. So Yeah, no, it's good. All right, well, speaking of first thoughts, we've all three of us have probably got a player, maybe multiple, but let's just pick one. Who's one guy that from the moment, whether it be the team pickers or the formats officially open, to write this moment, that no matter what tinkering, no matter what readjustments, no matter what you've done, this player has never left your side. Who's that player and why is that? Louis, we'll start with you, man. Who's that guy that has just never, ever left your team and why? Well, to be honest, I gave you one in each line, MJ, but I'll, I'll just do the one yes. and maybe I'll circle back if you miss them. So All right, sure. uh, for me, it's it's got to be Brody Grundy. I think he yep. comes in priced at about 105. He's a bloke DT who's gone fantasy, yeah. 120 multiple times. Uh, always passes the eye test generally. Even on yep. a bad day, he's 90 plus. Um, he's potentially 10 plus points undervalued at this point. And yep. you really do just need an anchor in that ruck, whether it be Grundy or Gorn. 
you do need a guy that you can be confident and go, yep, he's going to be my R1 or R2 for the rest of the year. I can throw away the key with that one. So he's one that I'm going to be building my team around. Absolutely. Yeah, I really like that. Before we go to Rids, tell us the other line guys, because that's a, that's a nice little bait and hook. And let's actually <laughs> help people out. Who, who are the other guys that you go, look, it doesn't matter what I do. They're just always there. Well, it's got to be Lockie Whitfield in defence, priced yeah, at 94. Right. We've seen a ceiling of 192 previous. He's gone multiple times over 100 across the season. Only concern yeah, is the body, but then you'd sure. say, well, why not start him then? Because if that's what 100%. you're believing, at some point it is going to happen. Maybe yep. it doesn't, and you get the top scoring defender all year exactly for a price right. of 94. Fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I won't delve into that one because it's pretty obvious why everyone's on Whitfield. Um, sure. Dunkley in the forward line, once Love again, it. he's a guy who have seen consecutively put up ton after ton after ton after ton. He can be the and best even, player in the game, not just can. in the forward line. Yeah. And a few years ago, we actually saw coaches sort of slip away that didn't have Dunkley. They needed to get him in their side immediately. Yeah. He had the forward status. He's going 120 every week. This is another guy that had the ceiling. I think he popped a a 190 as well, just a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah, across the formats, he's been a beast. And then your midfielder, who's that midfielder you're like, he's always there? Midfielder is, look, I've played around with this one. There's probably two, but I'll okay. give you just the one. Sure. Um, Nick Dacos. Nice. He's the pick of the rookies. Nice. Uh, he's obviously going to play. He's been training with Collingwood for a year or two now, um, yep. ever since he was an underager. If there ever was a product that is ready to come straight into the AFL, uh, it is Nick Dacos and Collingwood under a new coach rebuilding. It just says, pick me. There's no way yeah. you can't select this guy. And with DPPs coming in all formats now, not just AFL fantasy um, and champion data being at the brunt of it, barring something drastically happening, he, he'll pick up defensive status probably around that round six. And if he's not, it probably means he's spending so much mid time. He's popping monster scores for you for a cow. So so I agree. Injuries he'll, and, and suspension is the only risk. He'll be the last cow we get rid of unless he gets injured or, or dropped, which I doubt very much. Yeah, that's right. The rest might be the only thing that, that kind of hits his way that, that might slow that. I like those picks. By the way, speaking of cash cows, before we go to Rids, uh, our Patreons are from the breakout tier and up. Uh, mid next week, you get access to our exclusive cash cow guide. It's a podcast and also every single player that is priced and playing as a cash cow we review them. We give you some analysis on them, what their fantasy prospects are, whether they've got good job security. That is a great tool and resource that we give all our Patreons from the breakout tier or above. So if you want to get that, get in early, subscribe now. All the links are at coachespanel.tv and you'll be getting that bad boy next week. You'll have some time to delve into that before the season proper starts. Rids, for you, is there, is there just one guy that has not left your team at all this preseason? I'm going to go better than that. There's one line that has not changed for the Ooh, whole off season. I love that. All right. You're giving us multiple. This is value. And for I'm going to do this a special. This is at my DT. Okay. DT line. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's my rough line. My Ooh, rucks like have been Grundy, Proust, Hayes since day one. I like it. Do you want to explain just, why? Well, because we've already not? got the Grundy bit. I think I think Louis covered the Grundy bit. Why? Yeah, well, the, the Grundy's fine. Okay, so Grundy's an absolute walk-up star. He should be yeah, an absolute. Totally. He. It's a Monty. It's a gift. Well, besides Dacos and like, I mean, is there anyone else? And maybe Sin, I suppose, because yeah, he's now Port. probably the only real relevant defender rookie left. Mm-hmm. Um, He's going to have to be in 100% of real teams. Otherwise, don't consider yourself real if you haven't got him. Like, like, because, like, I mean, he's, he's an, we're talking about two spots on field, yeah, in the rucks. Yeah. Yep. And I reckon there's only two rucks in the whole comp that can go over 100. And I think Grundy is the only ruck in the comp that can go over 110, especially in DT. Yeah, well, and again, that's what we're talking about. We're talking DT. Supercoach is a different beast. The scoring's different. The hit-outs are ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Super DT coaches. is what we're talking about. Yeah. Don't worry about Supercoach. Oh, that's... I know. I'm just clarifying before someone hears the comment and sends well, us numerous yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure yeah. they will. They'll that's do great. that anyway, knock us, which knock is great. Right. Out. 
We've so, got a lot of questions about Proust and, and, and I'm going to just pull them out of the Patreon question now. There's a lot of people that went and feel no, free no, to no, don't do go that, that long. Don't do that. I'm going to answer the question why Proust has not left my team Let's without do. even worrying because you know what I'm like. I don't follow what people ask. No, on Facebook that's why I'm here. Yeah. Facebook's like the devil. Like, I just wouldn't recommend it to anyone. It's a terrible, terrible anti-social media mm. platform. Mm, Proust in Dream Team is 255,000. Yeah. So, MJ, Braden Proust is 255,000 in Dream Team. Yes. I'm going to give you a couple of names. Horn Francis, 290,000. They cost 270,000. Josh Sin. 225,000. Ward mm. was 246,000. Proust is actually rookie priced, mate. Now, yeah. many, many years ago, I remember coming up with a little bit of a words and I said, um, the best kind of donuts are rookie flavored donuts. Do you yeah, remember taste, this? Tastiest donuts of all. Yeah, because you're only dropping 40, 50 points a week. Who cares? At worst. But the best thing about Prusa, Kate, is you've got a guy called Hayes that's going to play pretty much. Like, I mean, unless something absolutely goes crazy and Lysette yeah. becomes the world's greatest ruck, I mean, Hayes is going to play games. Well, Combin's like, around the mark too. So regardless of Hayes or not, Combin looks like he's going to be in the picture for us too. Yeah, there's going to be a few. Remember last year I was talking up and we said that we, we could start Flynn at R2 because we, we had hit. a guy called Meek at R3. Yeah, and Hunter. If like, I mean, either. And then yeah. I think Hunter came in as well late. Yeah. I mean, how many points are you actually going to drop by starting Bruce in your team and he doesn't play? What, 40 points, 50 points? But then everyone compares him, okay, to a Max Gorn. Oh, no, well, I can't help Bruce. I'm going to have a Max Gorn. But, well, Max Gorn goes 100. But you don't compare him to Gorn. You're not comparing no. You're comparing him to a cow. You're not comparing Sin to Lloyd and you're not comparing Hollands to Dunkley. No. So why are we comparing Proust to Gorn? Like, it doesn't make sense, yeah? So all we're doing is capitalising the points on the field for the dollars. Simple. So to have 255,000 as your R2, I can't tell you how strong your team looks when you do that. So it why looks play with so it? good. But, and yeah, again, but what happens, MJ? Round one comes, okay? So he yep. gets dropped, okay? He doesn't sure. get picked. Something happens, okay? Well, oh, that's great. Suspension. Well, I'll drop my M6 to a rookie and I'll upgrade Proust to whoever I want. It's yeah, not it, that it's much a, rocket science, it's is it? Two trades. And again, in Dream Team and Super Coach, you've got the boost. So wor this is worst case scenario. You blow one of your boosts out early. Worst case scenario. And that is your rookie cover doesn't play for whatever reason. I'm keen on your take, Louie, in a minute on Hayes as the power representative of the panel. I'm keen to get your take on him in a second. But at worst, it's a couple of trades. At worst, it's a donut for a week. And there are actually options in and around the price point too anyway that aren't exactly horrific. So it's not a disaster. It's a couple of trades or a one-week donut. And that means nothing in the end. You can pick that up with a captaincy score or two that pops over the next couple of weeks. You can pick that up with the rookie roulette of which rookies are right on field and which are not. Remember guys like James Jordan last year? For rounds one, two, and three, he was popping out 80, 90 plus scores across the formats and people had him on the bench. And they were popping other dudes that were getting 50s. You're going to see 200 points variances over the first couple of weeks just on the rookies and the fielding alone. And what about the captaincies? Now, but there's another 50 points. You may end up going, okay, I have Prusa K as my R2. Mm. Um, I'm going to take 120 as my VC this week. Sure. Just so I can lock it in. Because yeah. I can guarantee you, the time that you go out and you don't take 120, your captain then gets 90. But no one carries on like pork chops about that. No. Yeah, we're all carrying on like, oh, Proust is the most... My hardest decision in the world. Actually, it's not. It's a no-brainer, yeah? Yeah, and regardless of whether or not he's R1 in that GWS side or not. Now, I have the premise, and I saw enough last week, and I'm watching the trend this week, 
to believe the GWS midfield looked better with him in it. The hit outs to advantage, the structure. Yes, he had low CBAs, but he's coming off an interrupted preseason and off the back of COVID, for goodness sake. Um, if that trend continues, I'm all in. Regardless, I'm all in. Because again, to your point, Ritz, he's a rookie with job security in my eyes. So even if he's ruck forward sharing, what's the worst that happens? He goes 50 and picks up DPP. Oh, what a disaster of a rookie. Like, get the narrative correct. I think you're right, Ritz. Don't contrast him to your mid prices. Don't contrast him to your premiums. He's a cash cow and nothing more, nothing less. He's there to get you to the premium ruck as quickly as possible that you believe will be R2 for the year, whether it be a value that comes your way, whether it be an injury that enables it, whether it be the emergence of four or five, six rounds of data gives you that, oh, it is gone. Great. I'm all in or, oh, Ryder's out for, for the whole year. I'm jumping on Marshall or O'Brien is dominating yet again. It's whatever it is. It just gives you the visibility. It's why for me on that. In that You're point. right, guys. It's it's not Gorn versus Proust. It's, it's yeah. Gorn versus the premium elsewhere. You've got yeah, 547K correct. between Gorn and Proust. In AF, it, all, yeah. it, it also becomes Proust versus your cash cow. That's right. So just do that little addition. It's the multiplication. See where of... you land. Because if you're putting 547K on top of, oh, let's say, Jason Horn Francis's head at 290K, sure. you're getting an 850K player. You're in yeah. almost uber premium territory there. Well, and you're now you... talking about an Andy Brayshaw. Yeah, exactly. Andy Brayshaw. Then you're looking at, all right, well, maybe it's Proust versus, oh, let's just help Wolf. my argument. Let's just Wolf. pluck out, oh, pluck out yeah, Rayner. Let's use Rayner. Okay, let's use him. Yeah, well, that, that's just it, isn't it? Well, what do you think Rayner's going to average? And um, just going forward a little bit, he's actually my one popular guy. You want nothing to do with him. Why? So, yeah. Could... Well, well, let's talk about that. And again, we'll come back to Hayes in a second. Rayner's that perfect guy because it's the, if Rayner turns around and gives us all a 65, every coach is sitting there going, he's done his job. He's made me some cash and popped some points on field. So it, it's what we see every preseason of coaches using confirmation bias and not the same logic across lines. They look at someone like a Matt Crouch last week and go, oh, he just got through. That's exactly what I needed from a guy coming back off an injured preseason. If he does that again next week, I'm locking him in. They look at Bruce's game and go, oh, well, he wasn't out there long enough for me. Just have the same yeah. level of consistency with your narrative, Riggs. That's crazy, yeah? yeah? Like, I mean, that's the perfect example. People are going, oh, geez, Crouch looked good. He was running around and he did this and he, did. And he did that. And he, he was out in the park. Oh, we're going to go grab him because we know he's, you know, he represents value. But you're missing all the other doubts. Like, I mean, yep. this yeah. guy, he's coming yeah. back from a very, very long-term injury. Could yep. be managed at any point in time in a real no doubt. rebuilding team. Correct. Who could go youth at any drop of the hat. Yep. Like hundred percent. Just make sure you're consistent with your narrative, you know? Yep. I think that's good advice. And um, no one's asking you to do anything different. Just be consistent. So you're not tricking yourself. What does Marty Crouch average on time on ground as well across his career? It might be 75%, might be his best season. Yeah. Do they build do they him? Build him exactly. Do they rest him in, in round three yeah. because he's a little bit sore? Look, I can see a world where he comes in and, and has 65% game time. Crows aren't going to be making the finals this year. They, yep. they don't have a reason to, no, to gosh, push no. for a premiership here. Their, their main sort of drive is, okay, let's develop this young team. Yep. And Minutes in kids. Track them. Yep. And maybe we can compete for finals next year if we have a good showing this year. But sure, yeah, it, it's a you've got to look at the concerns on these players as well. It, it can be rosy on one side, but on the other side, you can think, hmm. You know, you've got to take that into account too. And I think there's two guys yeah. that came out of last weekend, Heaney and Butters, okay, yeah. where people are going, wow, we, mid-time, this, that, everything. Don't forget that, and I mean, this is no slight on these guys, but they've, no. they've had a bit of history about them with injuries. And mm -hmm. I mean, even Hickley came out today and said that Butters' size isn't, like, he's not really your prototype midfielder, but he's as good a midfielder as you can see. But he's a, he's a small lad. Yeah, yeah, he's a small frame, yeah. 
I mean, throwing that like frame into those contests like he does, he's going to get a few knocks here and there. They're going to be sore. Heaney, I mean, how many times over the years have we seen Heaney limping and everything else? Yet yeah, everyone's carrying on like idiots, saying that these guys are absolute lock-up, guaranteed, you know, new buttes. And yeah. it's like, and I like them. I, I, yes. I've actually been on Butters since day one. But yeah. the thing is, okay, they do have risk involved. Don't make out they don't. And stop That's highlighting right. the guy who's 400,000 or 300,000 <laughs> cheaper who yeah. has the same amount of risk and question marks as everyone else. Yeah, but at a lower risk from a price point perspective. It's um, nuts, isn't it? It just drives yeah. me crazy when this sort of narrative turns to one individual or one name. And we see it every year, MJ. I don't know. It, I'm happy to let it go, mate, because it's it's just one less coach i've got to try to find a way to work past towards a rankings goal so i'm not i'm certainly not going to help to make too much change there but but you're right it is it is a hundred percent the right approach louis i want to come back to you before we talk about you know the next thing that we want to get to is these popular guys that we, we don't want to touch and, and why in a sec but hayes it was, it was someone rids alluded to that's in that ruck line he was been and has been groomed and now with laddams out there is certainly a greater opportunity for him um, is is he fighting for a round one berth in your eyes on this weekend, or is it very much um, he, he should be there um, and only injury is going to risk his round one debut? What's Look, your I take think on Hayes? It's a little Hayes, bit mate? of both, really. I think if Sam Hayes comes in and okay. plays well tandem with Scott Lysette, so that's two parts. We're talking Scott Lysette is good up forward when Sam Hayes is in the ruck, Sam Hayes is good in the ruck and vice versa. So at the moment, personally, I don't think we're going to see him in round one. I think he's going to have a few sample games just to get a little bit of run through the legs and to, to just, I don't know, get a little bit extra match fitness uh, in the sample. And then he's going to come in and play tandem with Scott Lysette. Um, but in terms of Hayes isolated, He's going to be a great player. I mean, I think he averages about 36 hitouts in mm. the sandfall. Uh, he's well and truly the best ruck yeah. in, in the sandfall at the moment. He's begging for an opportunity. Laddams is yeah. gone. Port has pretty much declared this is our next guy. It's just going to come down to where Scotty yeah. Lysette falls in the team, I think. So that, when you talk about trends, now, is going the- to be something that we look at closely next week or this week coming. Yeah, it's good. And the best thing about this, though, NJ is Port play Brisbane on the Saturday night of round one. They do? Giants play Sydney Saturday afternoon. So we will know the teams by that stage. I think we find out on Thursday now too, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We know Thursday, but even to that point, you'll also even know the scores too. Yep. Yep. No, it's it's a really, really good shout. So I'm going to throw out a little theory here, okay? Because now that we've got the rolling lockout and everything else, now let's just say you're not 100% sure on R2. I wouldn't be playing around. I'd just be waiting, letting teams dictate who comes in as R2 for you, okay? So Proust, for instance. Proust doesn't get named on the Saturday. Then what happens is you could actually swap Proust directly out for a common, okay, who would be named for the Sunday game. Now, the thing is, he's got the DPP options and everything else. You can actually trade players in and out right through that first round, okay? Now, That's someone correct. like an O'Brien plays on the Sunday against the Dockers. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've got Wits against Natanui. Not that I'm suggesting Wits is a great option. Sure. I'm just, you do have Isn't options for that Sunday game, you know? So yeah. if you just go, look, I want to see what um, Hayes does. He's been named. I want to have a little bit of a sticky peek, see what he scores. Then I can have Condon, and he may not or may play. I can have anyone there, really, that doesn't play if Hayes comes out and scores 60 anyway. There are options for you to actually let the teams pick the t- guys in the positions that you're not 100% sold on. Because I reckon there's question marks over everyone, yeah? Like, I mean, if Marshall, like he plays a hell of a lot. Oh, he plays a big game playing forward, yeah? Yeah. And they went really out and got – they got Campbell in the off-season. So even if Ryder doesn't play round one, then Campbell might come in anyway just so they can get Marshall up forward. 
you got guys like Gorn, the splits with Jackson. You've got guys yeah, like Darcy made a paper. Yeah. You know, you, you just keep going on and on, and it just doesn't read well from the rucks. So if you're no. not sure about your R2, just see what the teams do and just go with the flow. It is a rolling lockout. Yep, I think that's some really good advice. Um, so we already talked about it a little bit. Keen quickly to get your boys' take. Who's a guy that's getting a lot of preseason hype, seems to be in a lot of team reveals, getting a lot of love on Twitter? Even their ownership is nice and high, but for some reason, and I'm keen to know what that is, you're not hot on that player. Louis, you kind of already alluded to him a little bit. Cam Rayner, I think, is your boy. Why are you out on Look, Cam first of all, Rayner? he's a big body that may develop into a really good midfielder, but... At this stage, I think he's just purely an impact player because if we're being honest, there's actually mm. not a lot of positive data to go off besides hope for why everybody's keen this season. If this guy didn't have pick one yep. next to his name, then I don't even think he would be spoken about. So just to back over why I'm saying this, he's coming off of an ACL. He's never been particularly known for mm. his fitness. He's never had an average over 58, which was his first season. His most recent season he played in 2020... Mm -hmm. 10 of his 15 games, he didn't even reach 10 touches. And MJ, what would you be needing yeah. Rainer to average to be a good pick? Well, at his price point, we're we're banking our basement cows across the formats. We're kind of hoping for 50s well, and 60s. If we're investing a little bit more, yeah. we want a little so bit I've more. I've got return. him at 70 is what I would need as a base minimum for him to be a good pick. Yep, and he scored and AF, 70 yeah. or higher in just 10 of his 63 career games. That's a that's a strike rate of 15%. Yeah, it's different in Supercoach. Yeah, in Supercoach where that impact is more awarded with effective disposals, score involvements, a little bit different there. But, but I think you're right in AF, especially if there are cows with equal job security and comparable scoring power. You always take the cheaper option when it comes to the cash generation. Um I like that shout. I'm, I'm keen to see how many people start. And what about for you, Rids? Is there a guy that's popular that you have no interest in, in getting into your teams? Yeah, um, Taron Thomas. Oh, I like it. Talk me through the Taron one. Now, he was more popular probably before last week's game. Um, yes. There was a lot of hype about Taron Thomas. And I think the guy is going to be a gun. There's no yeah, problems about that. A okay. kid can play. I just don't see him as a top six forward. He's going to have to have a massive, massive breakout. Yeah. But I just don't see how North fits so many mids into that mid rotation, especially, especially with the Greenwood now. And yeah. then Anderson's just come back. Mm -hmm. Simpkin comes back. They've got Phillips. They've got Powell. Like... Horn Francis is another one. Like, yeah. I mean, how many mids can one team have? And they're Through already the talking up go to. Yeah, that's like, true. I mean, I just don't. And Tarrant Thomas is a very skillful player, Rodio, that can play forward. Um, now, I, I watched his game on the weekend as well. I thought he got squeezed out of those mid rotations because he just wasn't impacting. Mm. And now it could very well be managing. Or totally. management of the yeah, time watch and the trend. Else. Hundred percent, but I mean that I'd be expecting something. But then I thought to myself, well, Jed Anderson's coming back, and I can tell you another one. Okay, and this is the big things that I try to pay attention to. Hmm. There was a massive, massive injury last week. Okay, that's going to be a six weeker from the looks of things, and this is alarm bells for me. Tom Papley is probably Sydney's most attacking small forward. Mm -hmm. There's a guy called Isaac Heaney that's yeah. probably the second most attacking small mid forward for the Swans. I just don't see how this doesn't impact Heaney. I'm fascinated so, to see how this works. Those injuries, mate, and this is another one from earlier's discussion, keep an eye on injuries they don't have to be fantasy-relevant injuries, no. but they may actually be fantasy-relevant because they impact guys who are fantasy-relevant. Yeah, and this is the big one. At what point in time does John Longmire go, you know what, that experiment of midfield time, that can wait for six weeks, and we're going to throw Heaney forward. I mean, 
you see that um, lack of love for Toronto because Toby Green's out at the moment, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, right. I mean, why why are people going, well, I'm still backing in Heaney when I think Papley's just as important to Sydney as what Toby Green is for GWS? That could be an absolute, you know, real throw a spanner in the works type injury. Very, very much so. Yeah, you're almost wanting to watch this week. What does Sydney do? Now, again, they're different types of damaging forwards. Papley's more of a crumbing on the ground, pressure forward sort of mercurial, whereas Heaney is that third tall impact, takes contested marks, difficult matchup, athletically and aerobically and physically difficult for defenders. But the yeah, point but is... Yeah, but Heaney does that role as well, he, though. MJ. He does do he that does too. Tackle, he does He does apply pressure. He chases down. He goes both ways. He does a lot of the same role that Papley does. So we'll now, need to Papley's watch this weekend, as, won't we? Well, he's not as aerobic as Heaney and doesn't no, have not. the aerial prowess, but no. they are very, very similar players in that they can actually impact through their like contested Through their ball. role. Yeah, yeah. And that's the yeah. thing. Is, so it's going to be, okay, what does Sydney do this week? Who do they play in that small role? How do they structure up differently? What does that mean for Heaney? What midfielders are missing from the side? We know Mills is out. Um, it's putting all the pieces of the puzzle together to give you the information you need to make the most informed choice possible. I, that's one of the big ones for me this, this week. And if I was watching one player and their role, and I'm watching a few, Heaney's the one for me that I'm like, I want to see how Horse handles this. I want to see how the Sydney line structures up around this. Um, he signed a six-year deal today um, to join, the, to be a, a swan for life, basically. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to me what happens on this match. Um, speaking of this match, what we might do, fly through quickly every match that's coming through this round of um, community series clashes. And I just want you boys, no explanations. Just a name. Tell me a player from each club that's on your what that you're keeping an eye on. Footnote might be you've got them. You want to rule them in. You want to rule them out. You want to see if the cow plays. Whatever it is, you're going to work them through through the weekend. Just give me a name, and that's it. Carlton taken on Melbourne. Louis, who's uh, your boy? Blow George Hewitt. Reeds. I've already got George Hewitt locked in, so I'm looking at Zach Williams though. I'm keeping an eye on Georgie Hewitt too. Uh, Melbourne, the other team. Uh, who Melbourne, got I've just got Clayton Oliver. Uh, there's not. I know what I'm going to get from this Melbourne team. I feel, and Clayton Oliver is someone that I'm seriously considering in my team. So I just need to um, confirm that really, but I won't learn anything. Nice, Ritz, Luke Jackson, Trent Rivers for me for keeper leagues. Uh, Friday night, it's the Bulldogs and the Lions. Uh, Who's our Thrall. Bulldog, Louis? Ritz. Yeah. Well, let's make it a try. Uh, and the Lions. Who's the Brisbane uh, player? Kitty Coleman. On, Louis? Noah Ainsworth. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, he's a nice little cheapy option in a couple of formats. Uh, I'm also keeping an eye on Kitty. Hawks taken on the Tigers Saturday. Yeah, Louis, it may sound weird, but Tom Hawk? Mitchell. Oh. I like it. I'm keeping an eye on him. All right. What do you got, Ritz? No, I don't care about Hawthorne. <laughs> Tom Mitchell, we know what he does. He's going to start in my team anyway. So why are we even bothering? James Sicily, I hate him. So he's oh. a no. Look, I mean, if you're going to pick, we're playing a game, yeah. Pick guys you like to watch. Don't pick guys you hate. All right. Otherwise, you're going to be cheering for guys you hate. All right. Tell us who you like him. Uh, I'm putting Ned Long as a mid-forward cow. I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, what Tigers are you looking uh, tigers, at, Tigers, uh, got two here. Dustin Martin for that mid-roll and, and Hugo Rouse-Smith mm -hmm. for that forward rookie roll. Oh, nice. Nice. I like it. Jaden Short. Yeah, I'm keeping a big eye on Bigger Vaughn because, you know, I love an Ivan. Uh, the uh, non-showdown showdown, Louis, Adelaide, Port Adelaide. Uh, Wayne Malera. you got an eye on? Ritz. Mick Hinge. All on that hinge, mate. I'm with you on that one. With no seed, I'm on the hinge. Uh, he could be a very handy cow for us. And from our pair players, uh, Zach got, Butters. Really? It has to be, I think. Yeah. It's Sam Hayes. Yeah. I, I think like it's that. Sam Hayes. 
I think Sam Hayes. It's and guess what? Proust's selection in your team should be really, really linked with Sam Hayes's game. Yeah, it very well could be. I really like that. I want to. I want to keep an eye on. Uh, Young Sin. I want to see him one more time. I, I, I enjoy watching him as a footballer. Um, that more than anything else. Uh, Essendon taken on the Saints. Uh, Louis, who's your Yep. Andy McGrath. Ooh. I want to see that half-back role. Yeah, nice. I think that's a, a very tasty option through there. Um, I, I'm with you on Andy McGrath. St Kilda. Who's the Saint that's uh, on your eyes, Louis? Hayes, Jack Hayes, who... May come into the comp as a, nice. even a Good Sentiment chat. Ruckman. So um, that'll be one to keep an eye on for mm. sure. Yeah, it could be another one linked to the uh, the Proust effect. I like that. What have you got, Ritz? Yeah, that's it. Haze. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a triple haze. haze. It's all about the haze. Player. Well, if you're looking at Jack Steele, why are you bothering? You know what he does. You know. You know what's going down. All right. Uh, the Sunday games, there's the trio of them. Giants versus Collingwood. Which Giants on your eyes? Uh, well, obviously Luke. Bruce, but as an extension to that, it's Cogs. Yep. Nice. Ritz. Bruce. I want to keep an eye on Taranto. I want to see that role again. Everyone believes he's going forward, and I think that's still very true, but he barely did last week. I just want to keep an eye on what Timmy T could do for us in this preseason. Um, and the Magpies. Uh, who Magpies, got, Paddy Lipinski. Ooh, okay. Ritz? Uh, it's the Maynard Cup, so we've got to Thank you. Maynard does Thank you. Not. Yes. Correct answer is Maynard. Uh, 100% every day. All right, Swan's taken on the roost. Oh, just Heaney, Swan, especially Louis. after the um, Papley news and, and also signing that six-year contract. Mm-hmm. We kind of wanted him to be holding that over the Swan's mm-hmm. heads, I think. Yeah, he's got his money already now. Has any rids for you? Uh, Braden Campbell. Oh, does he go forward? I wonder if he's the one. Uh, I want to see Dylan Stevens. And what he does this weekend, because in DT and Supercoach, there's some cash cow eyes on that kid. Uh, North Melbourne uh, League. North, I've got Taron Thomas. I don't nice. know if this guy's actually going to play or not, because um, but it's Luke McDonald for Keeper Leagues. I think he's an absolute sneaky 100 defender option in Keeper Leagues. Yeah, I really like that, especially with the early injury to Aaron Hall, um, who's no certainly to play round one. I, I'm keeping an eye on Will Phillips. Want to see that midfield trend? Uh, he, he's he's kind of the on he's the forgotten kangaroo from twenty twenty one. So got an eye out on him as a mid forward. Uh, Freeman will take it on West Coast in uh, the non derby derby derby. Uh, who Will which Brody. docker have you got, Louis? Yeah, because you said Will Brody, I was going to say two. Will Brody's definitely one of them, yep. but Hayden Young's the other one. Yeah. That's a and I wouldn't shit. mind having a sneaky little look at Heath Chapman as well. Oh, you thief of joy. Yes, Heath Chapman, I want to keep an eye on. For, for draft leagues especially, that dude could be valued very, very late. And which eagle are you uh, well, keeping an eye on? the eagles Louis? have fallen over, especially in that midfield. So I'm going to be keeping an eye <laughs> on what Tim Kelly can do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Ritz? Uh, there's a couple, but there's a young guy called uh, Hume Dixon that may mm. be fighting for a spot. So I wouldn't be mind seeing him play well and get the SPP spot. Um, Connor West, I think there's a little bit of soreness in his foot. Yeah, he's touch and go this week, but there's a chance of one. playing. If he does play, he's definitely worth a look and see what role he's got. For me, any any West Coast player that attends, attends the midfield, I'm watching anybody because they are hemorrhaging for people that can play in that position. And MJ, there's another one as well that I was <clears throat> on a couple of weeks ago as Proust <clears throat> cover, and that's Bailey Williams. Yes, definitely, especially in well, across the formats, but definitely in Super Coach and DT. There's there's something to look at there without doubt. All right, last one of the game, Monday night, Gold Coast taken on the Cats. Who's uh, your son, Louis? Oh, I love that choice. I it's- could tell you who it isn't. And that's Lockie Weller. I just don't care what Lockie Weller does in this game. I just won't be going near him. Is that because you've been burnt has a thousand. Well, no, not so much. He, this guy, um, he looks a million dollars, but he really, he, he never actually comes good, does he? 
Yeah, it's a bit of like a, I mean, This it. might be his year. This he might be Aaron. Yeah, Ford. it always takes a year for a year. Yeah. You know? yep. Um, the Gold Coast. Uh, let's just go. Um, I don't know how you say his name, but he's the SPP guy, twenty-six year old SANFL. Go on, Louis. From last year. Ooh, it's, it's actually I cheaters. I got some feedback from a mate that messaged me cheaters. the other day. Cheaters. 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 Well, there you go. Let's say him, mate, if he gets a game. Yeah, I'm I'm big watch on cheaters if he gets named, let alone if but he mate, plays. Because from a keeper league perspective, and oh. I'm thinking salary, there's a lot of hype around Sarong. There's a lot of hype around Chera. There's a guy yep. called Noah Anderson. Oh, yes. Who it's is just tracking likely. as good, if not better, than all of the rest. Yes, no, I really like that shout. And then the last one, G Long, who's the G Town player? I want to see how Patrick Yuli. Dangerfield's moving around because he comes in at value in fantasy. Every format is is value. I think even uh, uh, our Patreons might know uh, Riz's take uh, on him in Supercoach. So just a, a sneaky thought there, Riz. For you, who's the cat you got an eye on? The Coning. I like it. I like it. Big fan of that shout. Big fan. Uh, for me, in keeper leagues, Zach Guthrie. Keeping an eye on bad boy. Zach Guthrie. Of oh, Cam Guthrie's Guthrie. brother. <laughs> yes. Oh. The one that doesn't work at AFL Media, yeah. So he's still in on a list then, is he? He's still on a list. Wow, MJ, that's like a big he's finished high school. Wow. Well, you know, someone's got to make a big call. Yeah, <laughs> if he could grow facial hair, Zach, I know you listen. Come on, mate. Help a brother out, mate. That'd be awesome. Um, no, I just Depending on the depth of your keeper league, there might be something there, which is all good. Uh, all right, let's power through these questions from our patrons before we wrap it up. Uh, we'll throw the first one to you, Riz. It's from Jared. He goes, what's your thoughts and the prospects of Rob this year and moving forward? The news around Strawn um, keeps getting him a little bit scared. Is Rob someone you'd be keeping an eye on in 2022? There's something about Riley O'Brien that makes me uneasy, and it might be that he's just an ugly footballer to watch. Mm -hmm. He is such a big, clumby... Like, he's just cumbersome. Mm. He's hard work to watch, MJ. I I, I mean, you're a crow. How do you feel? Like, I mean, he's a... Nervous every time he gets the ball. He's a trier, isn't he? But, geez, the effort is amazing. Yeah. I just like liking people to watch that I own. I don't know if I could ever enjoy owning Rob. Yep. No, I, I think that's a fair summary. But um, from all reports, he's having a ripper preseason. And yep. like, I mean, we've known that he's done good things in the past. My thing so, about yeah. Rob is, um, does the Crows game style actually suit his fantasy scoring? His best years came when the Crows were either trying to squeeze the last juice out of the old list and the rebuilding restumping year of 2020 in the COVID year where they were just getting destroyed every week. When the Crows get their run and gun game going, it's very handball happy. It's very surge and take the first option, which is not conducive to a Ruckman taking marks down the line and getting involved. So MJ, I have that, a question. I don't is it strong? He should be worried about though, or is it till four? Uh, I think Thilthorpe will eat into his ceiling. Um, but I think Thilthorpe is going to be the long-term forward for the club. So is it a Thilthorpe? Did I say Filthy. Thilthorpe? That's okay. Yeah. We all know who you mean. Yeah, I, I think Filthy's the I long-term think forward. he is pretty much the long-term ruck and the long-term gun. So yeah. I don't think Strawn is a worry. I think No, Strawn I'm not worried by Strawn. Yeah. I think it's Thilthorpe. Yeah, Filthy's the one that we'll eat more and more midfield opportunities from him because athletically the kid's a freak. Um, So, which is fair enough too. Uh, Louis, here's one out of the blue from Ian. He wants to know who is somebody that no one is talking about, but should be getting some airtime. Who's that guy that nobody's talking about, but should be getting talked about. Any names? MJ caught me off guard here because I think after this weekend, just about anybody um, who was on anybody's radar is being talked about now. Um, so look, I'll throw it's it true. back to the guy that I said before, which was Patrick Dangerfield. He's someone who people yeah, have no, a I bit think of that's a fair thought shit. about him at the moment. Um, he's certainly someone who can yeah. go above 100 um, if in form and if he has the role. And 
And if he's fit, all things considered, but when he's come in priced at 87, it's just undeniable that there's genuine value there. Yeah. That's MJ, cool. I'm going to throw a name at you. Oh, please. Jake Lloyd. Yeah, good one. Why are people getting rid of Jake Lloyd? I don't know. Like, did he do anything wrong last week? I, I didn't see anything that wasn't a Lloyd preseason game last Matt, week. He's just cruising around, getting marks, just doing his and thing. I mean, on. it seems like, oh, Jack Crisp, oh, he's had heaps of CBAs, and then suddenly everyone's getting rid of Lloyd for Crisp. It's like, Who cares? Lloyd is just Lloyd, yeah? It, you know what you're going to get. Um, and Crisp has to pop at that price point. Um, he doesn't just need to hold. He needs to pop um, at that price point. Um all right. Grimo wants to know, Louis, while you're there, Sicily, is he a trap with, with GF coming back um, from injury and the Hawks still kind of redeveloping exactly who they are in the rebuild? Is Sicily going to rebound back towards those Look, premium? I can't really answer the second question. In terms of being a trap, though, I think his ownership has almost reached the point where it, it's not a trap at all. If you're picking Sicily, you and 50% of the competition are picking Sicily. So you can almost make a point to yeah, maybe you don't hard, start him. Yeah. And if he does pop, then you jump on him. But from a Hawthorne point of view, yeah. I think he's the player that they want to build around. He's only about 26 years old. He's still young. He's a superstar when he's on. I think he's got that rebounding back role. I mean, he's likely the future captain mm. at that club. So... I'm thinking James Sisley from a yeah. fantasy perspective can come in and go 80, 85. And I think there's a yep. there's a world where he can push 95. We'll see what sort of game plan they, pa- yeah, they play. Yeah, I think they that's might his ceiling. To, um, attack off of half back, but chip it around in there and then go once an option opens. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair shout. Super coach, he's got a little bit of a higher ceiling um, with the intercepts and with the, the disposal efficiency. But I think you're about spot on the money about that uh rob wants to know rids he's given me five forwards and for dream team and super coach rather than ranking the five tell me the top three of these guys so i'll give you the names they're the same in dt and super coach but they might be different ranked trelaw butters thomas heaney and degoey give me your top three in dt of those guys as forward options as ranks whoever doesn't miss the first game first (laughs) Like, I mean, are any of those guaranteed to play a full season? An injury history would say no. So I would go Butters because I like cheering young kids who are talented yep. on. Okay, Butters in one. So right. I think Butters would be my first choice. Okay, and then the other I, two to top three. I love Trelaw, okay? Yeah. I've had a massive man crush on Trelaw, but he can't get a full season out of himself anymore. He's just, his body's shot. So, I right. mean, if you're going to choose Trelaw, you have to start him and then bake the points and then just expect him to be managed a few times through the season or to get into it at some point. Um, who are the other ones? Heaney. I don't like Heaney because there's too much risk. It Heaney just worries me. Yeah. And Degoe, like who knows with Degoe? I'd pick Stringer ahead of Degoe at this point. <sighs> Okay. And I, I don't like Stringer at all, but I would pick Stringer ahead of Degoe right now. Yeah, I'm just, well, I just don't know. Has he done enough work to be a pure mid? No, well, nobody knows. That that's exactly the point. Coming back off injury with that hand injury, coming back off um, being um, expelled from the club. Yeah, but don't um, forget, there's a new coach in the mix as and well. And they're like, yeah, exactly. It's and too like much for me. Guys, to go. Like, like, what stage does Collingwood go, you know what, we're going to go full rebuild and go Finn McRae, you're going to play every game in the guts. Poulter, you're going to get runs in the guts. Um, the Brown brothers, you're going to go through here. Yeah. You know, Dacos, like, I mean, there's so many of these guys that could get games through there. I just, yeah. like, we know what the goalie does, yeah? Like, I just don't know, mate. I just don't know because, like, these are the t- types, okay, that need a big preseason, uninterrupted. And do he's all had the a very interrupted of, one. Where, yeah. yeah, I just can't pick him with any, like, confidence. Yep. No, fair enough, too. Um, last two questions. There's multiple questions about Proust, by the way. And I feel like we've answered them. The only element I'd add is this. Because a lot of people are going, can we go? Did we see enough? All that stuff. We did a lot of proof stuff midway through the podcast. The only thing I'd say is this, have an exit strategy. 
if you don't see what you need to see, if he doesn't get named, if an injury comes in the first, whatever it is, like every player, just have an exit strategy. Who's the guys around the price point? Or as Rids mentioned before, I'll drop my M6 and I'll down to account, I'll do that. As long as you know your backup plan, you should have enter the season with absolute confidence. All right, yeah, last question. The thing is, okay, let's just go Bruce one more. You sure. have to be 100% sold at R2 and who's going to be the top two ruck. I, to and I can't be. I cannot if, be. And I can guarantee now, before Bruce's discussion even came on, if you were sold that that guy was number R2, you would have already had him in your team. You wouldn't even be looking at Bruce. Yeah. No, of course not. The reason Bruce is actually, it's not about him. It's actually about outside of Grundy, I have zero confidence that the set and forget ruck approach will be so clearly top two rucks so far and above. So it's not about Bruce. Bruce is just the best option in my eyes to give you visibility rather than, oh, it's clear set and forget, which we have had over previous seasons, but I don't think it's going to be this year. Um, Rid's last question, and then um, feel free to jump on uh, the back of this, Louis, if you wish to. Craig wants to know, with the extra trades in Supercoach and DT, do we now need to start looking at these, these formats of the games a little more like an AFL fantasy approach where it's more value in our starting squads rather than focusing on the traditional guns and rookies approach? I've been thinking about this for uh, quite a bit over the preseason. I definitely think no. I okay. don't. Okay, so yes, the trades went up. But there's a lot of strategy that could be applied with these trade boosts, with saving a few trades early on and then turning it into an AF. But don't forget that we're going to have COVID. We're going to have injuries. We've seen it year after year, MJ. You know? We've seen it in the BBL. We've seen it in the NBA where players just disappear for two weeks. Yeah. So the thing that we should be taking out of this, though, is – that we can actually take a risk in one or two of these spots and then have the flexibility of using trade straight away to fix that risk if it doesn't come off and then to save and conserve over those rounds three, four, five, where the grind hits and we just start ticking while the money's being turned in. Yeah, Uh, it's a good shout. Man, hey, lads, appreciate your work on this episode. As always, an absolute pleasure. Louis, you've been a beast, Thanks, mate. mate. Appreciate Thanks for you jumping me. on. Always enjoy it. All right, it's good to have you on. And Rids, mate, always a pleasure too. And there's one guy from Gold Coast that I just forgot to mention before, oh, Elijah please. Hollands. Yes. I think good. make sure you keep an eye on this kid. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to be ready for round one or not. Sure. But if he gets named and he plays well, I think round one, pretty much gets done yeah i think that's a really fair shout hey mate as always an absolute pleasure speaking of gold coast we may be hearing some extra news from the gold coast suns over the next couple of days so just keep an eye on your podcast feed from us there might be some bits of information you want to get out of that coachespanel.tv is the place where articles are dropping all the time over these next few weeks before the preseason wraps up and coachespanel.tv is also where you can get access to our patreon supporter group there's exclusive content dropping for them including our rookie guide article and podcast they drop exclusively for our patreons that's where you can get it um, all you need to do go coachespanel.tv check that out You'll be able to get that at some point next week. Well, the main art community series is upon us. We wish you all the best of luck with your final bits and pieces of tinkering over these next couple of days. More to come from the coaches panels. We help you hopefully have your best fantasy footy season ever.